Welcome back to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training for HCIE. Today topic we are going to discuss on BGP. Let's start our part 9. Okay, so let's look into the uh, next requirement. Uh, this time we are going to look into the Rocco preference attribute. So based on the same topology, ensure that R1 reach network 10.0.2.0, which is on the router 8, through the R3. Now by default, R1 will go to both R2 and R3 as a possible path. Now R1 will use router 2 to go out if assuming everything is the same because the router on router 2 have a router ID of the lowest. Okay, so 2.2.2 .2 will be the preferred one over 3.3. .3. Now, based on the requirement, uh, R1 are supposed to use router 3 to go to this uh, network. Okay, and uh, for us to do that, one way for us to do is using a local preference. Now, by default, the local preference is 100. Okay, 100. There are two ways for you to do that. The higher local preference is preferred. So either you can increase the router tree preference or you can reduce the uh, local preference on the router 2. But since the question specifically say that you only can do on router 2, so you have no option to increase the preference, but you only can reduce the local preference on R2. So our solution later on, we are going to look into reducing the R2 to 50. So R1 will prefer R3 to go to the uh, final destination. So it will go like this, okay, to the final destination. Now the problem over here is if let's say R8 reply, R8 is going to send back to router 6, router 6 is going to go to router 4, and router 4 will have two ways for them to go into AS100. It's either go to R3 or R2. So R4 will prefer to go to R2. So let's look into the lab on how we can solve the issue. Okay, so using back the same topology uh, on the previous session. So let's have a look here on router number one, where we do a display BGP route. Okay, so you can see that the 10.02, we have two gateway, 2.2 and 3.3. .3. All right, so if let's say we are going to do a trace, 10.02.1, as you can see that it actually went to 12.1.1.2. The reasons being that 2 and 3, if everything is the same, based on the uh, uh, what we call the uh, preference, uh, the lowest router ID will be preferred if everything is the same. Okay, so, so from R1 to R2, okay, and from R2 to R4, and then from R4 to R6, and from R6 to R8, that's the destination. So if we are going to do a reverse, if I go back to R8, and I'm going to trace back into R1, you can see that it's 684624, which is here, this interface, and 12. So you can see that the uh, forward and backward is using the same path. But the requirement is to use the uh, router tree uh, R1 will be using R router 3 to go to router 8. Okay, and you only can do it on router 2. So let's do it on router 2. Now the strategy is to use the IP prefix to match 1002 network. And we are going to create our route map. And uh, the route map, once I match, I'm going to apply a lower uh, local preference. So beside, before this, let me just to verify display BGP routing 10.02.0 the local preference currently is 100 okay that's from uh, router number three and uh, okay that is on currently what i have okay and uh, let's configure the ip prefix i give it a 10 index 10 permit 10.02.0 subnet mask of 24 display ip ip prefix okay there you go next we are going to create a route policy okay i call this a 10 permit node 10 if i'm going to match 
IP prefix of 10, I'm going to apply a local preference of something lesser than 100. So anything from 0 to 42, uh, for, uh, 4.2 billion is an option. So I'm going to use 50. Okay, so I have my first route policy is working. Then I'm going to use a route policy node number 20 because I have a permit statement just to match this. If it's not matched, then I have to give it as a default to, per, to get it permitted. Okay, so let us me do a display route policy. So I have a route policy. Name is called 10, node number 10 and node number 20. So node number 10 is to match the IP prefix. All right, so if I match IP prefix, I'm going to give a preference of 50 and that's a 20 to permit any other thing. So you can see that right now there isn't have any uh, counter that is being hit. The reason is because that uh, final step here is to apply the policy to our BGP and this is how you do it. So go back to the uh, BGP. So first we are going to do a peer to 24.1.1.4. We are going to use a route policy with a name of 10. This is my route policy name. And I'm going to do an import, all right? Because the uh, 1002 is from uh, R8 going into R2, so it is import. Okay, so we have uh, done this, and uh, if let's say we do a display route policy, all right? So we have a match. Okay, and we also have a match for the remaining because we only match based on 1002. So if let's say we go into the uh, R1, let's double check if I just do one more time. Okay, that's correct. You can see that now uh, it actually went to 13.113, which is R3. That's exactly what the question asked for. Whereas the previous one, we have 12. So if let's say we do a display PGP route based on the 10.0, okay, you can see that this actually went to number three, okay? So we have effectively changed the local preference. So the local preference is to allow the uh, internal router running on BGP to have a preference. The lower, the worse, the higher, the better. Okay, so 50 versus 100. So R1 is going to go via to R3, going through R4, landed in R6, and finally reach the destination of R8. Now, if we are going to reverse back, and uh, we do a trace route one more time, you notice that it doesn't actually change. So first it's going to the router six, okay, router six, then it go into router four, which is here, then it still go back into router number two instead of router number three. The reason is because that local preference only influence your outgoing, it doesn't influence your incoming, All right? So uh, we are going to look into how we can influence the incoming on the next exercise. So here we are going to look into MED attribute. Okay, so let's look into the requirement based on the same topology. The round trip path between 10 network, which is origin from R1, and the network 10.0.1, which is destination to R7, are inconsistent and not optimum route. So let's trace the route. R1 will choose R2 as the uh, next hop. All right, because R2 and R3, R2 have a lower router ID. R2 will send to R4. R4 between 6 and 7 will choose R6 again because of the lower router ID. And finally, reach to the R7. So R1 first hop will be on R2. Then it will go into R4, go into R6, and the final destination go to R7. But when R7 reply, R7 will forward it to the R4. Then R4 will forward into R2, and then it will forward to R1. So we have one hop, two hop, and the three hop. So you can see that there is where we have the inconsistency come in, and we do not have an optimum route. So if you want to have an optimum route, we need to go to one to two, two to four, and four to seven on both A. Okay, so it should be three hop on both the uh, incoming and outgoing traffic, egress and ingress traffic. 
So the requirement is to perform the configuration on R6 and do not modify the AS path. Now you only can do it on R6. All right, and since you cannot use the AS path, so the only way that you can do is using the MED. So for us to use the MED, we are going to configure the MED on R6 to have higher, higher cost. All right, because MED lower is preferred. Okay. So if I'm going to configure 100 over here, and the default is that zero, and since I only allowed that on R6, so R6 is going to send an MED to R4. R4, uh, when receive MED of 100 versus nothing, it will try to use R4, R7 instead of using R6. Okay, so let's look into how we can configure uh, this uh, solution. Before we look into the solution, let's double check on our R1. And if let's say we do a tracer with a source of 10.0.0.1, going to 10.0.1.1, which is on R7, you'll notice that R1 will go to R2, okay? Then it will go to R4, which is 2 to 4. Then you go to 6, 4 to 6. And finally, it go into the destination. So it requires 4 home. And if I go from R7, all right, 10.0.1.1, and I want to go to the R1, you can see that there's only three hop. Okay, so this is where the inconsistency and suboptimum path. And the question asks us that we only can do on R6. So let's do it on the R6. Okay, so on the R6, uh, first, uh, the uh, step that we are going to do is we are going to use the IP prefix to match. 10010. Okay, so once we match the 10010, we are going to apply a high cost and we are going to export this to R4. Okay, so let's do it now. So IP, IP prefix, give it a name. So I call it as a 10 here, index 10. Permit 10.0.1.0. So I'm going to match the uh, 10.0.1.0 advertisement with a subnet of 24. So display IP IP prefix. Okay, so I have uh, one prefix already set. So next I'm going to create a policy. I call it MED. Permit node 10. I'm going to match my prefix. The prefix name is called 10. Okay, so this is my prefix name. If I'm going to match, I'm going to apply a cost. Anything that is more than one is sufficient. So I put in 100 and uh, I need to permit the rest. Okay, so MED permit node 20. That will complete my route policy. Display route policy. Okay, so I have here, the policy is called MED, case sensitive. I'm going to match the prefix, okay, that is uh, matching 10.0.1.0. And if I do match it, I'm going to apply a cost of 100. Okay, so uh, before I apply this, it's good for us to go into router 4 and double check our costing. In this case, our metric. Okay. This is 10.0.1.0. So as you can see that the MED value is zero currently. Okay, and uh, currently is actually using the uh, 4.7. Okay, so this is my 4.7 here. And uh, I also have here This MED value is zero as well. So this is on the four six. Okay, so the MED value is not available. This one you have nothing. This one have zero. So that's why in here, for me to go into the ten dot one dot zero, you can see that uh, 
the MED value is zero. Okay, so let's go into R5, sorry, R6, and we are going to apply it. So go back into the BGP 400. I'm going to do a peer of 46.1.1.4, route policy, MED. This time I need to export because I'm going to advertise these, this network from R6 to R4. So I'm going to use export, enter. Okay, so I can do a refresh, BGP all, export just to make sure that alpha receive it so on the alpha i'm going to do a display and uh, for me to go out you'll notice that it's going to 46 all right currently it's still 46 because the uh, uh, med value has not been changed so i just need to wait for a while Okay, so I see this figure. All right, so you can see that now after a while, uh, it does change here. So you can see that the metric is actually 100, uh, in this case, the MED uh, to the 46. And you can see that the 47 still remain as a zero. Okay, so let's check our result. If I'm going to do a trace, 10001 to 10001.1, you can see that it's three hop. And this time, it's actually passing through the uh, 47, okay? And uh, on R7, it should be the same. 10001, that's my destination. There you go. So now, we have solved the uh, uh, problem by using the MED attribute. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.